Hey everybody and welcome back to the Jedi Knight's Watch. My name is Graham and today we're going to be doing another Hot Toys 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. Now this is going to be an oldie but a goodie. This one's a classic. This is one of Hot Toys best figures they've ever done. And this is going to be a flashback review on Robocop MMS202-D04. Now, if you're new to the channel, I want to invite you to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell so you don't miss any new content coming your way. Also, we have live streams on Monday nights at 8.30 Central. Come join um, to be a part of the Jedi Knight's Watch community, of the Six Scale community. Hang out, interact in the chat. I would love to hear from each and every single one of you. All right, this is a figure that I've owned in the past, and I regretfully sold um, a few months back I was going through this phase where I thought I need to just focus on DC Marvel and Star Wars the three franchises I need to just get all the figures and go from there but you know what there was one problem with that I didn't love each and every single figure I was getting and I felt more like a completionist instead of somebody just getting the figures I loved I had Terminator Robocop um, John Wick the Predator figures and I was worried about how they would fit in the collection, so I sold them off, and I regret it. So, I've learned a lesson. I'm selling the figures that don't mean as much to me, and I'm getting the figures that I love, and that mean a lot, because when it comes down to it, you have to be happy with your collection. So, here he is, and a big thanks to Andrew James, who is a big supporter of the channel. He hooked me up with this RoboCop with somebody online selling it, so thank you, very much to you, sir. I got a pretty decent deal on it, um, so I can't complain. But let's take a look at the box. It is a, um, it's got like a plastic clear cover over it. It's got an image of Robocop on the front, and it is a die cast piece. And it says MMS 202-D04, and that is die cast 4. On the sides, it also says Robocop and it has all of that info for you really cool picture of him. I like the design of the box It's actually gonna be two separate pieces the top and the bottom and uh, When we open that up you can actually see it's a styrofoam insert kind of like you get with your war machines and your Iron Man figures your other um, die cast figures I wish hot toys would go this route with all their figures either do the foam or do the the styrofoam I think that just adds so much class to the art box itself and when we open up that front flap that says Robocop you can see the figure inside and guys this is one of Hot Toys best I am so happy to have it back in the collection and be able to review it with you but before we get him out let's take a look at the base and accessories that he comes with now, keep in mind that my RoboCop figure was used, so there might be some wear and tear. Um, things might be a little bit different than if you were to find him brand new. Here we have the base, which is your typical one, two, three, four, five, six hex hexagon, right? Hexagonal base? Yes, because eight would be octagon. So yeah, that should be right. Don't know if that's a real word or not, but it is a nice base that has the typical crotch grabber and it says OCP and it's got the RoboCop logo there. It does have a nice shine to it. No front um, piece here. They, I mean, it's it says RoboCop, obviously, but that's the name of the movie. You would have thought maybe they'd put Murphy or RoboCop on the front. I don't know. Maybe it would have looked weird because you'd have RoboCop here, but maybe if RoboCop was at the top, not sure. But it looks really, really cool. The only problem with a glossy base like this is that it's going to scratch really easy. I don't think the camera picks it up here, but you can see some scratches on this from the feet of RoboCop himself. So that is kind of a downgrade right there. It kind of sucks that you have to be really careful, otherwise this base is going to scratch. And next to it, we do have this cool RoboCop remote, and it has an on-off switch and a button right in the middle. And this is actually going to be for the voice control of RoboCop. However, the batteries that I have don't work, um, so I'm not going to be able to use it for you. But this is cool uh, design here, and um, you know you could just put it kind of 
in front if you wanted or if you didn't use the base at all you know you could kind of have this sitting in front of robocop himself and it just adds a cool effect but um yeah that is the voice remote control for the robocop figure and here we have the accessories that come with our robocop figure and there's some really good stuff here but i also think there is some missed opportunity possibly with maybe more that they could have added and, and let's take a look at that right now so there are going to be four face plates we have a neutral face on the figure right now and then we have three other ones right here we have a die cast gun a plastic gun a battle damaged chest plate articulated hands the data spike hand and then a battle damaged helmet let's just start with this one this is a really cool piece, and I like it that they added some pieces that um, allow you to have like a, da a battle damaged Robocop. You know, you have the chest plate as well as the helmet here. However, I don't think it's enough. Like, I it would have been cool if they added something like Iron Man, where they give you thigh plates or, you know, extra pieces that could be battle damaged. I get it that these pieces aren't really removable, but... I don't know, something along those lines would have been cool. Yes, they did give us a battle damaged Murphy without the um, the RoboCop, I guess, uh, helmet on, but it would have been cool to get one with here too. So I don't know, it's it's not it's not a deal breaker or anything like that, but it just would have been cool. So let's take a look at the helmet here, and it looks great. Very good detail. I like the paint application a lot and the shine. Very authentic to the movie. And look at you just got like from Ed 209 just bullet holes and blasts and if you look carefully you can see Murphy's eye in there what a great piece of detail that Hot Toys added it is going to be magnetic and there they have the eye piece there very very cool I like that a lot and next is the chest plate and again really really good detail really good paint application dents in it just um, the paint application makes it look like it's actually been hit with like grenades and ammo and we have like oil leaking out and here you can even see there's like depth in here it's not just flat looks more realistic really really cool and it just clips in uh, so that's a great piece as well he does have the um, tight-fisted hands on the figure right now here's the data spike uh, he's got a nice gloss to the hands and then just be careful could poke yourself with that and then he does come with articulated hands and you can see the movements here these are great but there is one drawback and that is that he has a really hard time holding the gun one of my biggest pet peeves with this figure is I wish they just would have given us a sculpted hand that the gun would fit in I think that would have been a lot better because the gun just constantly falls out. I've even seen somebody on eBay was selling a figure that he actually put a screw through the gun and through the hand just so the gun would stay in place. I actually thought that was kind of a good idea, but obviously it hurts the, uh, the resale. It hurts the resale value. Taking a look, closer look at the face plates here. It's, um, I like them all a lot. Um, one thing to be careful with, if you're putting these in, the paint can kind of wear off on the chin. Uh, these all look really, really good. Uh, I think the the expressions look really good too. You know, sometimes with the Batman figures, we get the goofy expressions, but I really do think all these fit. You know, we've seen this one when he's like really focusing and shooting, like aiming his pistol. This one, obviously, when he's uh, getting into it with Ed 209. And then this one's uh, not a bad one either. And then you have that neutral face sculpt on the figure as well here we have his pistol the mag does come out and just goes right back in is it cock yep and it does cock um really good it's got some silver on there um there's no like weathering or anything like that but there really wasn't in the movie either so uh i think it looks really really good always been a sweet pistol and it comes with a die cast one as well that you can kind of put in the leg you do not want him to hold this one because it's just not going to work he's not going to be able to and this is one solid piece 
and there really is no paint application there's there's no silver it's just kind of a just a black die cast replica all right so those were the accessories now let's get our first look at the figure all right guys and here we have our first look at the robocop outside of the box and i know this guy's been out for a while and I've, I've owned him before and a lot of you have seen him, but in person, this guy just looks so unbelievably cool, so authentic to the movie, to the character of Robocop. The likeness is there of Peter Weller just in that mouthpiece alone. Oh, this is the total package, guys. If you don't have a Robocop figure and you're a fan, you have to have this in the collection. He shines, he steals the show, he looks pristine. You know, there it's he's a silver figure and there's just hints when he's rotating that you can kind of see a little bluish tint, but it's not nearly as much as we saw in RoboCop 2. He was a lot bluer. I do wish they would have made another RoboCop that was more of like RoboCop 2 as well with that bluish tint. You know, they already have the molds and the the pieces to make this figure it would have been so easy for hot toys to just reissue a robocop 2 and have it more of that blue hint but still he looks great as is in his silver and all of his glory but now let's just kind of get a closer look at the figure in hand all right guys and here we have the figure in hand and he does have some weight to him and he is going to have a lot of die casts in him as well, so that's going to add to the weight. Um, taking a look at the head sculpt here. Um, moves all over the place so we can get those... <laughs> movements in there. Um, just super, super cool. As, as I move it, you can kind of see like those hints of blue going on. Um, he does have like these rubber pieces in the elbows which is cool but like it's going to provide movement but you got to be careful that those don't crack and rip over time taking a look at the back here's the compartment that um, you can take the batteries out with and i did forget to show that piece and i think i misplaced it so that's probably why i forgot about it but uh yeah just really really cool you can see how easily the headpiece pops off and just put it back on the black has a really nice shine to it. He does have movement here as well. You can see the tight-fisted hands look great there. And then the arms even pull out so you can get better extension as well. Very, very cool. The legs also have kind of this rubber material here as well. And then he does have the springs here or the pistons that actually do work. Now, something common on these figures is going to be that he, he'll like to topple forward. These are kind of loose. Something I did in a video before was I used some, I can't remember what it's called. I can put a link in the corner here, but it's basically a, um, it's a liquid that dries clear, but it hardens enough that there's going to be more restriction here. So it should make the joints a lot stronger. He does have some toe movement as well. Very, very cool piece. If I can remember how to open the leg. I don't want to break it. Um, so then the leg opens like so. And then you can put the piston, or the, yeah, you can put the piston, uh, the piston, the pistol in there. Also, I did forget to talk about this little accessory here. And what it is used for is just taking the back compartment off of your Robocop so that you can get inside and change out the batteries. And it's as easy as just slotting it right back on. When it comes to removing the face plates, the helmet comes off and the face plate slides out like so. So just a couple of things to note as well. The rubber pieces, taking good care of those. The pistons on the back can be fragile, so be careful of those. The ankles could get weak over time. Be careful of that. These pieces here are glued in, these kind of like knee pieces. Those can pop off, so just be careful of those as well. 
when you're opening up the gun holster, just be careful that this piece doesn't get caught on his buttocks. Um, you got to be careful when closing it back up. Outside of that, man, this figure is so cool. Let's get him into some poses and talk about some of the things that I like and dislike about the figure. Starting with the things that I really like about this RoboCop figure, the first would be it's RoboCop in 1-6 scale, right? No, but seriously, he looks great. Like, the proportions are there, the, the likeness is there, the paint application is there. I think Hot Toys nailed this figure overall, and he is one of their best pieces to date. The second thing that I really like about the figure is that he comes with the four face plates and the battle damaged parts. Hot Toys did get creative and thought of what they could give you with this figure, you know, to, to give you more bang for your buck. You know, they could have given you two or three face plates, but they went out and gave you four. They gave you the battle damage pieces with that eye sticking out. That's really, really cool. I like that a lot. And the last thing that I like about this is that they added some die cast. Now, some of the newer figures have even more die cast than this guy does, but still, he's got a weight to him. He's got a, a feel to him that just feels authentic and great. Now for a few of the things that I didn't like about the figure. The first would be that the base has that gloss finish on the top and it just scratches so easily because of the feet of this guy. You know, they should have just given us a matte finish base. Uh, a diorama base would have been even better, but obviously Hot Toys wasn't really doing those back in the day as much. But they should have done a matte finished base. The second thing that I don't like, and this is probably the biggest one, is that he didn't come with a hand that was sculpted to fit the pistol. The articulated hands are too weak, they don't hold the pistol in place, it falls out constantly, and it's just a real big aggravation. And the third thing I don't like about the figure is that over time, the arm joints and the ankle joints get very, very weak. Uh, my last Robocop figure, the arm would sag down when you had him in the pointing gun position, and um, this one seems like the ankles are a little bit weaker where it wants to topple forward. So, I'm going to have to use some of that adhesive that I have shown you guys in a previous video just to kind of tighten them up. Um, but that is one thing that being with such a heavy figure, I think those joints should have been a bit stronger. Outside of that, man, this figure is so, so awesome. Could they have used a little bit more battle damage pieces? Maybe. But I think the clean version just steals the show here. He's got a great shine, great paint application, and a great likeness to Peter Weller and Robocop himself. If you can find this figure for the right price, I suggest you add him to your collection. You won't be disappointed. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any new content coming your way. And until next time, stay safe out there, and we'll see you soon.